Well, hello there and welcome to this episode of the Terry Cole Show. And you may or may not know this, but June 27th is PTSD, right? Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder Day, where it is observed and celebrated and it's really about getting people information. So because of that, and really in light of the world that we are living in, the pandemic that we survived, we've all heard the word trauma being thrown around quite a bit, but I think there's a lot of confusion about what it actually means. So if you are confused about what is trauma, regular trauma, what is post-traumatic stress uh, syndrome type of trauma, then this episode I made for you. Because in this episode, I'm going to be breaking down the definition of trauma so that you understand what it is and making the distinction between normal trauma response and stuck trauma, as I call it. Um, And I'm also going to be sharing resources with you. And I'm going to be sharing my own traumatic experience that got me very interested in becoming more of an expert on trauma-informed therapy work. So before we get on to today's episode, I want to just say, if you're new to my channel, hello and welcome. Please introduce yourself in the comments. We are a friendly group. Make sure that you hit the bell. Make sure that you subscribe because I put out new stuff all the time, twice a week, in fact, um, and I don't want you to miss anything new. I want to help elevate your joy and uh, lessen your suffering in life. And I do that by giving you new free content every damn week, my friend. So make sure that you subscribe, please. And if you are new here, my name is Terry Cole. I'm a licensed psychotherapist. I'm a relationship expert, and I'm the author of Boundary Boss, which you can get at BoundaryBossBook.com. So thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for all of your questions. I love to highlight your questions and your comments. So I am highlighting Steve Hancock under the time boundaries episode. Steve writes, mind blown. Thank you so much. This is changing the way I'm thinking about some of my relational issues with my partner, not necessarily about time, but at how, but about how I seem to be expressing anger for both of us. I couldn't understand why I was getting so much passive aggression, um, towards me and now i know some of the reason i can now address my own contribution working on myself and hopefully that will resolve it between us thank you so much well steve you are so welcome and hey man all you can do right is resolve your side of the street so your mindset is a good one just keep your side of the street clean when it comes to direct communication and you are gonna do great all right Let's move on to the content of today's episode. I'm going to start with a quote from um, Garber Mate, who is a very famous um, trauma therapist expert. Um, He says, trauma is what happens inside of you as a result of what happened to you. And just let that sink in because it is so friggin' true. When I was a young therapist, way in the beginning of my relationship with my husband, I had a very traumatic experience and that really impacted my life up until this point of this traumatic experience, which I will share with you. Some of you already know this experience, but I was a very, I would say not, not afraid of that much. I didn't live in fear. I had other problems, but that wasn't one of them. Um, I was pretty bold. Even as a young person, an extrovert, bold in my life. And then my husband and I got um, held up at gunpoint in our backyard. And he was just my boyfriend then. We had just gotten engaged, actually. We were going out to celebrate that. And um, it was incredibly traumatic for me. Not because of my own, the danger that it posed for me, my trauma was based on walking out the back door and seeing this huge person, like a wedge of a person with a stocking on their face, kneeling on Vic's back, my husband, and has a gun to the back of his head. Like this is what I'm seeing as I'm walking out the door. It's pitch black and I can only see there's light from the cars, right? We have our car still on because we were about to jump into the city. Anyway. This is the vision that I saw, and it was absolutely terrifying. Now, I didn't get shot. Vic didn't get shot. 
but the seeds of that trauma were already planted. And so I thought, I, I didn't, even though I was a young therapist at the time, since I had not had anything traumatic in that way, uh, a thought that you might die, right? This is part of what creates deep trauma is bodily harm or death to you or someone that you love, someone that you care about. So I thought I would just get back to my life. I was in therapy already, of course. I would just talk to my therapist. This is what I would do and it would, it would all just be fine. But what happened is I started having these massive symptoms of trauma. So I was having intrusive memories. They would just happen at any point. I would have, it was like I was reliving the trauma. I would hear a sound, a car leaving the driveway because that night I heard the car of the person running away after they robbed us leaving the driveway. And it would suddenly spark the entire thing. The whole thing would come back in my mind. At the moment when I was walking towards the scene, I disassociated in that moment, meaning in my mind's eye, in my view, I floated above the scene. I could see the top of my own head. Now, I know that sounds really odd. And if you've never had that experience, it is very odd. But it was like what was happening was so much that I needed to distance myself. This is a, And when I get to the symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, I will talk about that. Um, but it's a way of self-protection, right? Your mind is doing something to protect yourself. The other symptoms I had is I was afraid to be alone in my house, which was never really my experience. Not like that. I mean, I had a friggin' pit bull. I had like a knife next to my bed. Vic got the house completely redone, um, meaning there was a panic button behind the bed. So like that went straight to the police. So we had this massive security system put in, but none of that touched what I, what I was experiencing. Um, I had this very heightened startle response. So meaning no matter where I was, it, I constantly felt like people were sneaking up on me and I would go, oh, you scared me. I mean, to the point where if Vic was coming down from the studio in, in that house, the studio was the whole third floor of the house. He would start yelling from like the second floor, Tara, I'm coming down. I'm not sneaking up on you. Like it was so stressful for all of us in the beginning of this process. Night terrors where I'm, I'm dreaming of the dream, but in, in the night terror, it, the ending isn't the way it was in real life where, hold up. This is so interesting. I mean, this was like many years ago, you guys. This was like over 20 years ago and it can still get you, you know, where you think about, oh, because in those scary dreams, the ending wasn't that they stole what they wanted and left, right? The ending was something worse. And I would wake up right before they shoot Vic, but in my dream, he was getting shot. Just terrible. Keep in mind, you guys, we had just gotten engaged. I had spent my whole adult life really never thinking that I was going to get married, that I was going to have the kind of partnership and love relationship that I've now had, thank God, with Vic for 25 years. But at that point, I w it was still almost too good to be true, right? That, that it happened, that we were getting married, you know, for a woman who really never wanted to get married. This was in one second, that whole thing, that whole life, that whole thing that I had thought would never be for me could have been taken away. It was incredibly terrifying, but also very traumatizing. Now, a normal trauma response. So this is where we're gonna get into making the distinction between wh when we really need help and when we're having a normal trauma response, right? It's normal to have strong reactions following a distressing, frightening, terrifying event, right? But, this is where the important information comes in. There's a timeline, meaning the, for me, I had these, these symptoms that were, seemed very acute and heightened for the first, let's say three and a half weeks to a month, maybe even a little bit more. But then I noticed 
they started getting better. Now, I was also in therapy. I also was doing EMDR, which is a rapid eye movement desensitization type of a thing that you can do to work on trauma. I mean, I was a therapist, so I was doing all the things that I knew I thought would help. But it still, I still had those normal trauma responses. So the distinction between having post-traumatic stress syndrome or post-traumatic stress disorder, it's, it's referred to as both things, and having a normal trauma response is the time frame. If these symptoms don't get better, if they don't start to get better as time goes on, month one, month two, if they're the same. So, you know, everyone is going to have a different experience of a traumatic response. You know, we've all just been through a global pandemic. We've had, you know, mass shootings in the United States. I mean, we've had them for the past many years, but we just had two in a row in the past four months. That is, can be very traumatizing. So again, you got to protect yourself from the news because even just that, watching traumatic, horrible things over and over again can create a trauma reaction within you. So, and your, the way you would experience trauma, the way I experienced trauma could be very different. So it's a range of physical, mental, emotional, and behavioral reactions to trauma. So there's lots of things that you can do to cope and to recover from trauma, but understand there is a time frame where it's completely normal it doesn't mean you have stuck trauma. If one week after being held up at gunpoint, you're still having intrusive memories or night terrors, that is to be expected. And I would hope you would seek therapy right away. I mean, that's, I was already in therapy, so I didn't, I didn't have to seek it, but I did seek additional trauma treatment on top of that because I didn't want to have stuck trauma, also known as PTSD. So what, what are the criteria for it to be PTSD? We have to have the exposure, right? And they say in the DSM-5, which is the diagnostic, the diagnostic manual that doctors use, is that it's being exposed to death, threatened death, actual or threatened serious injury, actual or threatened sexual violence through direct exposure, witnessing the trauma, learning that a relative or close friend was exposed to a trauma or indirect exposure to aversive details of the trauma, usually in the course of professional duties. So this could be first responders or medics could have that experience where I would have um, therapy friends of mine who worked as um, rape crisis counselors and the burnout rate in that position is so incredibly high. I don't think I've known anyone who's made it past five years because you're being endlessly traumatized by the stories of people being violated in the, the most horrendous ways, right? So that kind of exposure can create trauma as well, but there has to be that exposure. Um, and then, then what is the other criteria? Intrusive symptoms, right, as I talked about. It could be re-experiencing, so you're having flashbacks sometimes, this is referred to, um, unsettling, unwanted memories, um, emotional distress after exposure to traumatic reminders, right? There would be things, like I said, what are the triggers that bring the entire experience back? And you have the physical re uh, reactivity after traumatic, um, the exposure to the traumatic reminders, right? So this is, we don't even know. People come back from war and they say that a smell can throw them into the traumatic experience. And it's like you were there. My, my husband's parents both had wartime trauma experiences. My mother was in a work camp. My mother-in-law was in a work camp in Russia and there would be, and she, of course, I mean, this was in the fifties, right? So early fifties, late forties. And she never got tra trauma help because, you know, they were first generation American, didn't speak English They're from, you know, Germany and Hungary. And I could see that when she would start to tell a story, something would trigger it and it would be like it was happening again. It was so painful to watch. And the thing with trauma, you guys, is that it's really treatable. Right. It's never too late. Even with my mother-in-law, I really wanted her. I mean, she's, God rest her soul now, she is deceased. 
Um, but I really wanted her to get help. Even then, I'm like, it's not too late. But, you know, it in her mind, she couldn't even, you know, wrap her skull around it. And it wasn't for me to control her. I just wanted her to not have these horrible feelings that she was experiencing. So again, moving on to the third criteria is avoidance. So we start to avoid trauma-related stimuli after the trauma itself. So you want to avoid trauma-related thoughts, feelings, um, or external reminders. Um, the next criteria is it really affecting your mood, right? So they call it alterations in cognition and mood, meaning you could have negative thoughts or feelings begin to worsen after the trauma itself. Um, inability to recall, right? We can also lose our memory of what happened. Key important things of the trauma itself you cannot remember. Having overly negative thoughts and assumptions about yourself and about others, about the world, um, an exaggerated blame of self, like it's my fault, or you know, that you caused the trauma somehow, um, or having an exaggerated blame of someone else. Um, and then, then you have regular along with this is the regular symptoms of depression, like, uh, no, no decreased interest in things that used to bring you joy, feeling isolated, um, difficulty, feeling happiness or joy in anything. Um, and then tr the other criteria is trauma related arousal and reactivity being worse. So meaning you might become more aggressive. You might become more irritable. You might start, um, engaging in risky or destructive behaviors. You have hypervigilance where you're constantly scanning for danger, a heightened startle reaction, as I shared with you at the top with my own story, where everything was startling. And some of the, most of those symptoms, of course, as I continued therapy and I continued I was having a normal trauma response, not PTSD. So those symptoms, most of them abated, except that heightened startle response. It's still, mine is still a little bit more than I think most people's is. Um, but I feel like if, if that's all sort of that's left, although of course you are indelibly changed, right? It, it leaves an indelible print, imprint on you. There's no possible way after you have a traumatic experience like I did and like hundreds of billions of other people have that you, you won't be the same, right? But with therapy and with understanding trauma, you can integrate the experience into who you become, which is what I did. There has to be some gem, not immediately, maybe a year later, two years later, but there's got to be some gem in that crap stew of what did I learn about myself from that experience? How, how did it positively impact my relationship with Vic? Which it did. It really brought us close together. Oh my God. It's so weird. Wanting to just spontaneously cry is so weird because it's not my usual way, you guys. So do pardon me, please. But it's true that that experience positively impacted us like I was like yeah I definitely want him in the foxhole with me he's definitely the one that I want with me in the foxhole of life you know um, the other, other criteria I want to share with you is the duration this is really important because if you have a traumatic experience and they, your symptoms are lasting longer than a month meaning they're not they're not incrementally getting better they're either the same or worsening this tells us that that is post-traumatic stress syndrome or disorder. And if this speaks to you, and don't worry, in the guide, terrycole.com forward slash guide, I'm giving you all of the information. Um, there's also a documentary I just watched by um, Dr. Gabor Mate called The Wisdom of Trauma, which I really, really loved. And they just asked for a donation. Like I just gave them $15 to watch it. But he's doing amazing work in the world. And another book that I love around trauma is um, Basil van der Kolk. And he wrote a book called The Body Keeps Score, which I think it makes trauma itself a very, um, very understandable. And I think that Dr. Mate does the same thing. And I want to leave you with this quote from Dr. Mate. 
He says, trauma involves a lifelong pushing down with a tremendous expenditure of energy to not feel the pain of past traumas. As we heal, that same energy is liberated for life and living in the present. So the energy of trauma can be transformed into the energy of life. So I hope that this added value to your life and that you learned something and that if you are experiencing this, that you will look at the resources that I've shared with you in the guide. Go to terrycole.com forward slash guide and get the help that you so richly deserve because you do not have to be suffering in this same way. There is a way to heal from trauma. So I hope you guys have an amazing week and as always, take care of you.